listening to Pink Lady Presents, only on L.A. Talk Radio. I'm gonna live till I die. I'm gonna laugh instead of cry. I'm gonna take the town and turn it upside down. I'm gonna live, live, live until I die. Hello and welcome. Welcome to Pink Lady Presents It Ain't Over Till You Say It's Over. I tell you, I have been blessed with meeting fabulous, fabulous people from all over, every age, in the work that I've been doing uh, since what? I think I was turned 70. So yes. this has been 16 years, because I'm 86 years young, going in Thelma to my 87th year. Wonderful. And I'm sitting beside someone who is energetic, passionate, full of real soul, and that is Ms. Thelma Jones. Hi, darling. Oh, I'm wonderful. Welcome. Thank welcome. you. Welcome. 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 Well, thank you for having me. Well, are you kidding me? I uh, met you first when you auditioned for a show of ours. Yes. And she just blew us away with her pizzazz and her uh, classic way of coming out and singing a song. So when did you begin all this musical talent? Well, I came from um, a musical family. I mean, that's what we, you know, we'd sing. Everybody sang together. That was our okay. form of recreation. Now, was that your mom and dad too? I mean, my dad and uh -huh. the and his sisters and brothers. Okay. And my dad played piano, and it was just a fun thing to do. I didn't re think at the time from a little person because <laughs> I can't remember when I was well, not you singing. Didn't, when you did, and so it was just. A fun thing, and I didn't think it was anything unusual about it. <laughs> I love it. And then when, and when did it get more serious? Well, then I, um, my aunt had me sing in a church ah, for a program. Okay. I was about five. Ah, okay. And really old. Yes. <laughs> okay. And there were a lot of kids in the family, so right. I didn't have access to a lot of fun things. Okay. But I loved pretty dresses and all. Oh of yes. That. <laughs> and she was she was an excellent seamstress, and she recognized that she thought I had s something different, talent wise, okay. special, and so. But she didn't, and she was very religious. Oh. So she did, but she didn't preach or say anything yeah. that, you know, you're singing the devil's music. Right, right. But she said that every blues song on the radio, I knew it at the oh time. Oh, my goodness. And she, of course, wanted me to sing gospel. So <laughs> she said I knew all the lyrics, the melodies, everything. Right. She thought it was amazing. So she said to me, if I make you a pretty little dress. Uh, uh, and rivalry I, will do it. Well, first she said, do you know any songs about Jesus? And I said, no, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. So she said, if I make you a pretty little dress, would you learn a song about Jesus? I love it. And I said, oh, yes, ma'am, I want you that dress. I was a vain little person. And so she made me this beautiful little dress. The only condition was I had to sing in church. Aha. Uh -huh. okay. And she taught me my first gospel song I'll Fly Away and that's I when it. I really started I singing it. from then on in the choir and and then you went uh grew up and you went in Barry Records what was uh, some of that Barry um uh, Records uh I'm trying to think how to there was a there's a very famous well sort of famous singer named Arthur Prysock uh -huh. oh I remember yeah. Arthur yeah. Prysock and he was partners with uh the record, the owner of uh, Barry Records, oh. Jaime, Mr. Jaime Weiss. Okay. <laughs> okay. We, we, we affectionately called him High Weiss. Uh. And, and um, he heard me sing, I think, um, he heard, I auditioned and I recorded a song. Uh, I auditioned with an Etta James tune. All I could do was cry. Oh. And then they signed me to Barry. And you did never leave me. No, I did never leave me. And that was a hit. Yes. And then the house that Jack built, Aretha Franklin, uh, yes. tell us about that. That was an that was interesting. Um, I I recorded the house that Jack built, and the sweet inspirations who ah. backed Aretha, Whitney's mom and a classmate of mine, Estelle and Myrna, another young lady from New Jersey. Right. And they ended up backing Elvis a lot too. Oh. Um, she was on the session, and she 
I think gave the song to Aretha. Wow. And so after that, um, mine, although it was a hit, that's what they did back in the yes, day. Yes, I know. If one person right. was, you know, if they wanted to promote someone. So they pulled my song and promoted Aretha's, and but still mine was number one in England. It went to top 100 in oh Billboard my goodness. before they did that. But wow. It, it was okay. That's how they do, did yeah. things back then. So now, <laughs> what are you doing now? I know that you just reissued um, Second Chance. Yes. Now, if people want to get that, they can, you, they can order it directly from soulmusic.com okay. or uh, Ace Records. Okay, in so let's, let's say soulmusic.com. Dot com. Yes. It's called Second, Second Chance. Chance. And then, or they can go to Ace, Ace Records directly because they, they are the ones that. Uh, and when did they reissue it? this? They reissued this a couple of years ago. Oh, wow. That's yes. fabulous. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so. And what, what they do? did, I'm yeah. sorry, to that's interrupt. okay. They combined. The Columbia album, oh, with okay. with the Barry music, because I had an album with a hit called "Salty Tears" on Columbia later. Mm -hmm. Wow, and that was what I think in the, the late seventies, eighties. Late seventies, yes. Oh my goodness! Well, you've had a, a career spanning quite a few years. May I ask how young you are? I am seventy-six. A child, a <laughs> child. No, really, when I say that, and I laugh because being, you know, 86 years young, and I say that to people, and they go, I'm a child? You know, I say, well, yeah, 10 years. Well, doesn't you were matter a baby. Where, I, a baby. <laughs> I, I, I say thank you. Thank I, you I, so I, much. I do, and I say thank you for being uh, such a lady and so talented. Uh, what are you doing now? What, what's happening? Well, I just I finished doing a huge show in Boston. Ah, it our favorite. We're both from Melrose, You're north right. of Boston. Yeah. Oh, uh, are you? Yes. Yeah. 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 How yeah. wonderful. Well, this was in Cambridge. Ah, uh -uh. mm -hmm. okay. the right in the vicinity of MIT. Okay. And so uh, I had not performed back there since Martin Luther King was assassinated. That was the wow. last time I performed back wow. there. Okay. Wow. And they advertise the show like that. She hasn't oh. been back in 50 years. Oh, oh, oh. Do you remember a place called Lenny's on the Pike? No, because the last place I played there during that time was um, in, in Boston. It was called uh, the Sugar Shack. Yes. Oh, okay. yes. It was yes. the Sugar Shack, Stubens, and Blinstrup's oh, yeah. and Lenny's <laughs> on the Pike. No, I Memory, played. sweet wow. memory. Yes. I love it. <clears throat> I, I, I saw Errol Garner play... Uh, Misty and oh, wow. Concert by the Sea at yes. Lenny's on the Pike. Wow. I'll amazing. tell you a quick story. You couldn't go in unless you were 18. Oh, okay. And I was less than 18, <laughs> but they charged us $5 to park our cars outside the club. Right. They'd open the windows in the club, yes. and you could listen as many people <laughs> as you could fit in your car <laughs> for $5. How so wonderful. we got to meet Errol Garner and uh, uh, Lionel Hampton and. Um, uh, Johnny Mathis oh, yeah. oh, and Mort right. Saul would appear there. Wow. And, now, and we were kids. Yeah. Yes. And now I think our audience is in for a treat. I know you are. So I'm going to ask you to sing it out there. All right. <laughs> okay. Is it on? Do I don't know. Is it, let's, let's take see. a look. Is it green or red? Is it green? Let's see. It's green. Good. You got it's it. on. It's on. Do you remember that house? I know you do now. This is a land I would work by hand. This is a dream of an upright man. This is a room filled with love. This is a love I was proud of. This is a life, the life you plan on love. Bring on love in the house Jack built. Do you remember that house? Yes. There was a fence and it held down love. There was a gate that he walked down on. This is my heart, it's turned to stone. Left me with the house with not a home. This is the love I destroyed the day I toyed with love in the house Jack built. Yes. What was the use in crying? I brought it on myself, there's no denying. It seems awfully funny I didn't understand Till I lost my upright man I said, oh, 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 yeah In the house Jack built Oh, yes 
I got the house, I got the car, I got the rug, and I got the rack, but I don't have Jack, and I want my Jack back. Hey, hey. Jack, you better come back home. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Selma. You know what? It ain't over. No. Till you say it's over. That's and I true. tell that to the audience. And I mean that with all my heart. Thank you. And it doesn't matter the age that we're in. No. Uh, I know people that are in their 30s and 40s that say, oh, I, you know, if I reach 45 or 35 or 50, it's over. No, it is not no, over. No, it's not. I agree. I, I think it has to do with something with our attitude. Yes. And I say gratitude. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes. the both together make it. We, we went to see a big band two weeks ago. Uh, the front man was Bill Jones. And everybody in the band was at least 75. Oh. They were oh, five over. trumpets, <laughs> five saxophones, five trombones, keyboard. Uh, and they all played with big bands. Right. Henry yeah. Mancini and, oh. and Glenn Miller and Tommy yes. Dorsey. They were amazing. I'm sure. And all of them agreed of it ain't over no. because they haven't said it's over. Yes. No, <laughs> I absolutely agree. Audience, you know that we do and celebrate lives well lived. Thelma yes. Jones. You definitely have a life, yes. my darling, mm. of a life well lived and yes. still living. Yes. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Let's tell them again where they can get her records. And the record they can get at Ace, Ace records, records or, or soulmusic.com. Soulmusic.com. Yes. God bless everyone. We'll be right back. Thank you. I believe it is not the breath we take in life that count. It's what we do with the breath we take. And I should know. 84 years young. Today on this stage, you will see talented performers all over the age of 60. It's only a cabaret oh, oh, Money You got lots of friends Hanging around that door I'm gonna live and live now Cause everything's coming up roses Then your fingers Touch my silent heart and taught it how to sing. Dear, with your lips to mine, oh, perhaps a duty fine. Sing with the strings of my heart. To reach the unreachable, the unreachable star. But I've got to do it all in three minutes or less. How about maybe ragtime? How about boogie woogie? Woo! Darling, let's dance. Let the music take us. The blues ain't gonna break us. We won't give it no chance. Just an old sweet song keeps Georgia. So kind, I'm about to lose my mind. You made me so very happy. So hush, 
little baby, don't you cry. To reach the unreachable Okay, we're back. I'm I'm like so excited because I'm sitting with my teacher, <laughs> my my mentor here. So I'm really nervous. Okay, he's not only your mentor; he's an effective mentor yes. because you have gone on to do commercials thanks to that man. That's right, this gentleman right here, Mr. Buddy Powell. Hi, Buddy. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Thanks for inviting me. Are you kidding me? Uh, as I tell my audience, I started late in life in the entertainment field. And when I actually got started, I got uh, Taft Hartley into SAG after and all that. And then I said, wait a minute now, I need to learn how to do commercials because I knew that they were asking for people of an age. They were using a lot of us. And I said, you know, where do I go? And everyone that I spoke to the one name was Buddy Powell, Buddy Powell. Well, you know what? I took that as an A number one uh, advantage, and I called Buddy and I said, I'd like to join your class. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, come on in, you know? And, and I did, and I thank him so much because I have learned a lot, especially I've learned a lot to be me, and that we can go into afterwards and be who you are. Now, you've been 26 years a professional actor. I was. Tell me about that, where that began and all that. My parents tell me that as a baby. <laughs> a widow baby. <laughs> they found me laughing in the living room in front of the television set watching <laughs> I Love Lucy. Oh, my Lord. And I don't remember that, but I'll, I'll, I believe them. Right. And I think from that early age, I loved the idea of performing, yeah. of making people laugh, right. of making people smile, of, of uh, entertaining. And I pursued it. I pursued it all my life, uh, high school, of course, and then into college. And out of college, I uh, pursued it. I ended up in Chicago doing dinner theater. Ah, Remember those days? Okay. Dinner theater and commercials, of course. And um, one thing led to another. Uh, Chicago work led to New York. New York, uh, the original Grease. I was replacement in the original Grease. And what, what part did you play? Eugene Florsick. Which the, was? The class valedictorian. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes, okay. Yes, Do you yes. remember any of the, that the, at all? The anti-greaser. <laughs> I you know. love it. Of course, I remember everything. Okay, you know. like, give a little well, thing. Well, the I show mean, begins. The yeah. show begins at a reunion, a 20th reunion. Right. For this class of 1959. <laughs> and Eugene is the, uh, the valedictorian. He's speaking to the audience and saying, don't you remember how wonderful things were back in 1959? <laughs> And then the curtain falls and all these greasers come out and do their gross things. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the beginning of the show. But it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Now, how long were you in Greece? About two years. In wow. fact, I, I did the final, final production <gasps> of that show when it became, well, of course, the longest running show on Broadway. That's right. Mm -hmm. I did the final show. Oh, my. Very emotional. Very mm. emotional. Wow. And, uh, and then I went in for two weeks for another show, I Love My Wife, a Cy Coleman show. And uh, I, I filled in, actually, <laughs> while they were uh, rehearsing the Smothers Brothers. Okay. <laughs> I love it. So, so while the, the, the A cast was working uh, you know, in the rehearsal room, I, I filled in. So that was a lot oh, of fun. That That's was great. And, uh, and then um, L.A. I and came to LA, L.A. in the early 80s. I came out here and uh, pursued it all. Well, let me ask you, some of the yeah. commercials that you did, like, what were they? Oh, I mean, my. So I know many. there's so many. Um, gosh, you know, a lot of people remember uh, AM, PM, Mini Market. Uh, they had a, a, a whole campaign with dogs where uh, the dogs would talk to each other and they would call me Rex, <laughs> and I was their dog. <laughs> And they would send Rex out to get uh, to get beer. Ah, uh, ah. That was a popular one. I actually did one for Kentucky Fried Chicken, where oh. uh, I portrayed Ronald McDonald. Oh wow! And the idea was that how dare McDonald's <laughs> try to sell chicken, chicken sandwiches? Oh. 
when ah. when only you know, KFC could. Right. And it ran about two minutes because <laughs> <laughs> McDonald sued them. Like, well, everybody said this is wrong. You can't make fun of Ronald McDonald. Right. And that's what they were doing. It was Ronald McDonald in a courtroom being tried. Oh, mm-hmm. that's hysterical. funny. Very funny. Very funny. Yeah. I like that idea. And and you know left and right all kinds of things. Early on, computers, Wang. Do you remember Wang? Wang oh, sure. Computers? Yeah, right. These were these were word I processors. I think they were based in Boston. As a matter I think of so. fact. Yeah. yeah. And and we didn't even call them computers because we didn't know what they were. Mm-hmm. But this huge thing on a desk, and you would type, you know, sixty words a minute oh. <laughs> on on a Wang <laughs> word processor. Right. Is that what you did in the commercial? Yeah, or acted like I did. Ah, um, I love it. And so I had a lot of a lot of fun ones, a lot of mm-hmm. food commercials, a lot of silly things. Um, mm-hmm. just was it, was, was Silly energy, but lucrative. Yeah, very okay, yeah. lucrative. Yeah. And yes. you know, I I was also doing it when it was in its prime, when yes. commercials were really hot and mm-hmm. and uh, humorous commercials, especially in the uh, '80s and '90s. And so I, I got a, a lot of good stuff going. Mm-hmm. A lot of good stuff. So it was fun. How do you? I'm going to ask you a question that's kind of off the wall a little bit, but commercial wise, what is the main difference between like years ago when you did it and today? Well, I know there's a difference, but I can't create No, you know. I always remember the product is what comes first. You're there okay. to sell the product, your prop. It's right. not like theater acting. It's not like it's film right. acting. You are there to help sell the prop. And the way they sell props has become, or, well, they sell props, what they say right. uh, sell products has become different. Uh, it's the information about the product right. that's important, um, the look of the product, and sometimes the usage. And that's all secondary to actors. And you how know? is that used? Well, ago, they, 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 we see a visual on TV of the product, but we don't necessarily see people using Windex anymore. I get it. Mm-hmm. We know what Windex is. Right. So, right. so they may have a, a, an announcer tell you uh, Windex is the best you know, cleaner for your windows. But the days of seeing an actor wash his windows <laughs> with Windex, and go, mm-hmm. those days are gone. You know, we don't, they don't need us for that. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I mean, yeah. well, yeah. the the concept now is that I know that you always tell us that it's the definitely the product. Oh yeah. And, and we know that, but there still has to be something in it for uh, for all of us. So when we first of all, I'll go into what you do afterwards. But you're also a, cre- a credential teacher. I am. Right. Tell us about that. Well, I had gotten my credential when I was um, out of school. My, my BA was in theater and uh, secondary, and, and uh, my minor was in education. But I thought, oh, I'll never use this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an actor. I don't have to teach. And uh, I didn't for a long time. And then I reached a kind of a crescendo uh, right. when I had done everything, believe me, everything I wanted to do. The well, thrill was gone. Uh, what about the, the shows that you did? You did well, that all shows. came before. But I was going to say, when, right. I, when I decided to move on is when I went to UCLA and I got the adult education certification that was so that I could do something with that. But before that, oh, yeah, a lot of theater, a lot of... What were some of your favorite roles? Oh, gosh. Um, Damn Yankees. I yes, the, I guess. The Devil we're and Damn Yankees. We're showing a few of those. Yeah. Um, I, um, gosh, um, I worked with our friend George Chikiris. Ah, uh, yeah, Music wait, Man. What were you in? Music Man Music with Man with George. That's it, yeah. And, um, oh, gosh, so many fun things. Charlie's Aunt with Donald O'Connor. Oh, mm-hmm. I love it. Um, God's Favorite with Pat Paulson. Oh, my goodness. Um Move over, Mrs. Markham, with Virginia Mayo. <laughs> oh, I remember. Oh, and oh, the yeah. best, the best was Butterflies Are Free. Remember mm-hmm. that play about no. the blind boy? Huh? Uh, no, well, that? she did the movie, the movie right, yeah. right. But it was based on a play, and it was a, a, a clever play about a, a blind boy and his mother. Oh. And I did it with June Lockhart. Oh. Do you remember June sure. Lockhart? Sure. My La- mother told Lassie, me about your that. mother, your grandmother, <laughs> uh, uh, Lassie's uh, mother. Right. <laughs> oh, and what part did you play? The boy. The, the boy. Oh. Donnie, I think his name was, the blind boy. And, so where, and where did you perform? Chicago. That, that Chicago. was in Chicago, one of the Drury Lanes. Uh, mm-hmm. There were several of these theaters that would do these shows for like 12 mm. week runs. Oh so. my God. What made you come out to California, though? Mm, theater in New York for me yes, was, was, had dwindled. Uh, really? in, okay. the, in the late 70s, the, the business had changed. Live mm-hmm. theater was changing. It's always changing. But, but in what way, though? Well, there weren't as many uh, new 
shows. There weren't okay. any new um, musicals or certainly no plays. Right. You know, they kind of stopped writing new plays yeah. a while mm -hmm. ago. And I had an agent who said, you know, you really should be on TV, buddy. You really, you know, should be in uh, Three's Company or one of those shows right. that were popular at the time. And I agreed. <laughs> and, and so, <laughs> humbly agreed. Humbly, yeah. yeah very so humbly. First plane out here I, I took and uh, and had a few years of dabbling in TV. And Like uh, what? Like what's Oh, gosh. Like? Remington Steel. Do you remember really? that? Remington oh, Bears I, I did the yeah. New Heart Show. Okay. Um, I did, oh, but my favorite, I have to tell you, my yeah, claim to fame. Me. I show this to my students so they can know the agony of, of show business. <laughs> I saved a contract from a pilot that I did for Mr. Mom. Do you remember Mr. Mom, the movie the with movie, Michael yeah. Keaton? Yeah. Yes. Right. Yours truly was um, hired to play that role in a TV version of the movie. Oh. And the contract, <laughs> if you've ever seen one of these contracts, tells you how much money you will make for the next 10 years. Oh, my And Lord. this, <laughs> being oh. 1987, wow. uh, looked like a lot of money. And I was thrilled. <laughs> I thought, now, this is what acting is. Yeah. Now, now I'll buy a house. <laughs> now I'll have the pool. And uh, it never went anywhere. It never went anywhere. Wow. Which happens, you know, every yeah, day. Yeah. Right. But that, that truly, a, a, a loss like that is my claim to fame. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Getting uh, jobs is easy. But, Losing them is But hard. you overcame. Oh, yeah. sure. <laughs> I mean, I, I keep running into people all the time, and somewhere in that conversation will say, oh, yeah, I, I go to the class that Buddy Powell teaches. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you have this vast <laughs> following that love you and revere you and have learned so much that it's yeah. helped them in their success. Well, I so love we, and revere we thank them. thank you for that. Thank you. Thank well, you. Well, people <coughs> of an age, okay? We don't know any of those people. We don't know any of those people. I'm now older than my students. I No way. <laughs> I get mm -hmm. it. But <laughs> believe me, you're not older than what <laughs> sitting here, okay? Mm -hmm. So... When mm. I started in the business, I was, at that time, I think, 72, 70, yeah. 70, 72. And people looked at me like, what are you doing? You know, you're, you're over the hill already. And you should be, you know, with your grandkids and all that. I said, excuse me? There's a world out there. We're going to live it because it ain't over till we say it's over. So I really didn't know where to go and what to do or what I really wanted. I knew I wanted to be out there. But how do you get out there? I mean, personality-wise, I'm energetic, and I'm like, you? Some, yeah, me. She's energetic, yeah, and I'm humble and shy. I mean, you know, <laughs> and modest, and modest, all of right. the above. All of the above. <laughs> but where do you go? And some of the teachers, I have to tell you, out there, they're after one thing, and that is the money. They really mm. don't care about me, the student. There's a lot about that, that buddy. Buddy, dear friends, he cares. He really cares if Pink Lady knows her lines, knows how to take that character and work it so that the product is the first thing that they see, and that makes the people happy. He also knows enough, and he tells you the truth about who you are and what you're doing not correct to correct what you're doing. So when I first went to his class, and this was funny, the first class, I, I don't think I ever told you this, but you know, it's a lot of people around you and everything, and some of them are really good. And they're doing their thing, and I get up, and they hands me this piece of paper and says, and by the way, everyone is videotaped, which is phenomenal, because all of a sudden you see pink lady up there, Jackie. I mean, it's like, oh my God. And read it because it's a product about, I think it was Kellogg's or something. And I read, oh, and Kellogg's, and it, I mean, I was way out there. <laughs> and Buddy says, okay, can we now do it like a little less because we really want to get, you know, the, like the product thing. Oh, okay. And I'm doing it again. And I'm really not getting it. I'm still out there. <laughs> Finally, after the third or fourth time, he said, okay, just stop being who you are and be the character. Be the person in the commercial. And then after a while, I, I, I got it. But he was most patient. And 
lead us through some of the things that, as a student of yours, how did you get all that ideas and what you have to teach them? I know it came from you doing it, but how did you then take it to us? I was approached by LA Unified School District okay. and uh, USC. USC oh. uh, wanted to provide a television commercial program for their students. And I met with both of them. And uh, the LA Unified uh, idea was so interesting to me. The idea of providing this program, this right. class, for older adults, as they called us, right. and uh, giving them everything they needed to know. Not, not guaranteeing a job, mm -hmm. but giving them everything they needed to know to walk out of that class and get a job, or at least right. pursue it. Right. And so working with LA Unified, um, I helped them develop a curriculum. Everything that I thought you right. needed to know. And those people who come to class weekly throughout the year learn absolutely everything, I believe, they need to know. Mm -hmm. um, it's not so much an acting class as learning technique and go. skills right. um, and, and the business of commercial acting. And, we've and had it some, is a business. Oh, definitely. It yeah. is a business. And we've had some very big success stories in our class. Right. It's, mm -hmm. it's incredible. I love seeing people. You probably see them, too, on TV. Oh, yeah. And go, oh, I know him. I know her. <laughs> She's in my class. So it's a lot of fun. But I, I provided what I knew to the school district who put it together in a program. And how long did you do that with them? Oh, maybe a few weeks, you know, meeting okay. with them and, and uh, putting together a curriculum. So hopefully any teacher to come in and, and, and do what I do. Right. Yeah. And then th that was at Baldwin, was it? Well, no, that was secondary. That Baldwin was secondary. Park right. Adult School invited me to create um, a, 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 a creative dramatics class ah, for okay. seniors. That was separate. That was something else. And to become their artistic director. They have a beautiful oh, theater, wow. uh, Baldwin Park Adult School. Who knew? And uh, so they wanted, they wanted some programs going on there. So it was all seniors. And what do you do with seniors in theater? What steel magnolias. Oh, I love it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> okay. did steel magnolias, right. uh, and it was it was an effort. It was an effort for mm -hmm. people who had never done anything, but they had a ball. And you know, inspiring them to enjoy what they were doing right. is much more important mm -hmm. than doing a good job. Yeah. But a lot yeah. of your students, and I will say this, some of them were engineers, yeah. doctors, nurses teachers i mean way out not even near an entertainment bail uh, bonds bail <laughs> bonds right police officers just I mean, transfer yeah, that just over tra yeah and they just said oh well, i asked one time you know a couple of people that were there i said like you know why are you doing this and they said you know what it's giving me something to do and i'm learning and i said well what did you do before i was in la police department i mean you look at from that to mm. Commercial. Come on. Everybody's on curious. Everybody yeah. wants yeah. to know about show business, mm -hmm. and and I encourage that. Um, uh, if they have the passion and the desire, go for it. I'll teach you what you need to know, mm -hmm. but you've got to have that you, you know have that something. desire. Sure, the, the sure. want to. Okay, so let's take it from the beginning. Someone walks into your class. Yes. Take it from there. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he does. Say. You're you're Welcome. among you're among friends. Thank you. Please ask questions. Yeah. We're all at different levels. Right. Whatever level you come in at, somebody else is going to be doing, having done more than you, maybe yeah. less than you. Learn from each other, ask questions, and uh, follow directions. And, and every week we have a lesson, as you know. Right. Uh, then we perform what we understand on camera, we take a break, then we come back and watch ourselves. And watch That's each other. That's scary in the beginning. <laughs> I mean, really scary. Watching each other, though, yeah. is where you get the value, yeah. I believe. You know, If you can accept the way you look and like the way you look, right. you're home free. But watching other people and seeing what they did with the Kellogg script, yes. I think, is valuable. Where yeah. do you get all the scripts? You I write, write everything. I write everything. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that was oh, hundreds. Please. And oh, please. No, we got, you know, you, we've all watched enough commercials. <laughs> we can, we can uh, write a script. But uh, I write them particular to the lesson. Right. And, of course, the cue cards. And uh, we work with cue cards, how to read cue cards, how to use them effectively. And that's not easy. No. no. I mean, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, like, the people that are in your class, who was the youngest? 
and the oldest, do you remember? Well, I, since I've been out on my own, I, I left LA Unified uh, in 2011, so now it's Buddy's business. Um, I, I label it adults 21 and over. So anybody like 21 that. and over right. can come if they're available at 1.30 on the afternoon, <laughs> <In> the afternoon. <laughs> on a weekday. <laughs> so that kind of <laughs> limits. Right. But, but no, we've had younger people in their 50s, of course. Uh, and then, oh gosh, Carolyn Black. Yes. 95? 95 years young. She has never turned down a job in her life. No, well, well, when I would go to a commercial, she'd be there you know, to <laughs> audition. I'd say, you know what? I'm here just for fun because this woman... Is that, I mean, she's a natural. She is. She is. She's incredible. Mm -hmm. What do you call a natural person? What, what does a natural person, individual, have? Somebody who laughed at I Love Lucy as a baby. No, seriously, think about that. Yeah. The idea that early on in your life, you got, you got hooked on this. Yeah. And, uh, but yet, at it, 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 other people's ages, mm -hmm. if, if it interests you, if you're curious about it, give it a try. Give it a try. Hmm. But, but I, don't, I don't find anything in you. I see your passion. Right. I see your desire. Yeah. I see you going home and pursuing uh, getting work. Right. Mm -hmm. Who was the lady we visited at the motion picture home that they were still doing commercials at 102? Um, what, what's her name? You know? I don't know now. I can't remember. Okay. Was she in my class? Yeah. 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 Good we for her. We, yeah. yeah, we walked in and we were visiting someone and she else. she just passed away. Oh, yeah. Just we, passed we, away. We were visiting... The, the woman that we helped get into the home, who was that? Ivy Bethune. Ivy oh, Bethune. Yes. Okay. Oh, gosh, yes. yes. And okay. there was another woman there, and they were talking and said, you know, if she goes out, don't even bother because she gets it. So she was 99, the other one was 102, going out on commercials going and getting commercials. them. And well, how yeah. special is that? Yes. And they want to know that oh, you're yeah. 102. Yeah, you oh, yeah. That matters. Yeah. Now, that's don't you look ask. 90 on me. <laughs> right. You better look 102. Now, that's the other thing. The ages that people are looking at commercials today. I really see a lot of people that are, quote, up there. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna ever say old, but Mature. up there. Yeah. Mature. There, there's a progressive commercial that we watched the other night. Progressive, Where instance. they're talking and then they lower the mother. She said, oh, this would only be better if my mother were here. And they lower this woman, and who I, I think her. is 94, <laughs> and she's doing commercials. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. We have a lady at we. Uh, <laughs> there's a lady in an E-Trade commercial now okay. on one of these um, elevators that goes up the stairs. Okay. The oh, uh, she just the, rides it up. Well, right. we've seen the red Joyce, dress. yeah, Joyce, 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 Joyce yeah. Yeah. yeah, right, fabulous. And of course, they had to have somebody like that because no, of the product. Because of the product, right. we wanted to see somebody who needed an elevator going up, and she needs you. Know, <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, but we've taught her when she walks with her cane, always posture, always ah. posture. Nobody wants to work with somebody like this because right. you're afraid that in you know yeah. two or three break. hours they're, they're right. going to fall apart. Fall apart. But yeah. if you show people that you are healthy and you've got great posture, you right. know that it's it's very important because mm. you're you're being you're selling yourself to complete strangers. Yes. Uh, I was on a show with her. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Oh, it was a, it was actually a movie. Yeah. Uh, and she was. I mean, she's up there. Yeah. And she's like. Mm -hmm. Who's, who's tired? I'm not tired. I'm not ready. Because they want to take a, another take. I'm ready. She was like, oh, I, I thought I was good. Right. She was when, better. When, when you did the Super Bowl commercial oh. for Loctite in 2015, they asked, they, they were dancing involved. And they said, do you yeah. think you could do 10 hours? And she said, I get up every morning. I take my vitamin. Let's go. And she did it. And I afterwards, mean, they all applauded. Everybody else got their energy from her. I'm sure. I mean, and it's I'm still sure. running. It's the Loctite adhesive. Yeah. 2015. 2015 commercial. Super Bowl. Yeah. Well, I remember I was in, sitting in your class one day. And we had just done a few things. And we were waiting to go on to our video. And my phone rings. And I thought, uh oh, it's going to kill me. But I was waiting because I was on call for a commercial. And I'm looking at it. I'm going, buddy, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm waiting. I'm, I'm on, well, what do you say, on call, right? I mean, uh, and avail, avail. availability. Available, yeah. and, Avail. Oh, yeah. so you tell people what that is. So. Well, yeah. they love you so much. Right. They want you to hold that date in your calendar. Right. And, and you don't do anything else on that day. Please hold that uh, for your decide. for your right. yeah our availability for your availability so that we know you're available. So I told you that. But it then, is not yeah. a guarantee right. Right. of a job. Right. But you feel good because you were one of the considered ones. They loved you. You know. They loved you. So the phone rings. I'm going. Uh oh. 
So I, I leave the class, and the class is filled, you know, what is she doing? And I go out, and now I'm outside the schoolroom there, and I yell, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. I mean, like, I'm going crazy. It was my first time, my first job. And I run in, and I go, I got it, buddy. I, I didn't care who in the world was there. I got it, I got it. And I, that was my first, it was a bank job. Washington at, Mutual. Washington Mutual. Yep. And I'm on a 30-foot cherry pickup, and I'm all dressed up. And the guys are going to kill themselves, the husbands, because they didn't do something right for the bank. And I yell, George, don't jump. Who's going to pay for my Botox? <laughs> Never forget the line. Never forget. But I was so excited sure. when I ran into your class because to me it was new. And, it was, and it was you inspired everybody in that class yeah. to mm -hmm. know that if it can be, she can, she do, can it. do it. Right. Hello, I can do it. I can do it. We begin every class by sharing right. yes. only business related stuff. Right. And some people say, I pass. Other people say, I audition for this, yes. I'm unavailable for this. Right. And I hope that encourages everybody, everybody. to know there's things out there. Mm. Uh, there, there when, is. When, when Pink gets a call <laughs> to go out on an audition for a commercial, yes. I made the mistake initially to say, What's it for? She said, I don't care. Just getting the call. My job is to go and give it my best, leave nothing oh, to... I'm so proud of you. Yeah, I know, I and know. she does. Yes. And then she gets home and the phone rings and says, can you be back here in an hour? I said, what? Oh, they want me back there. I, I, she just left the place. We hadn't even gotten to the... It's amazing. It's like no other business. Yeah. When, like when you it did is. the Loctite commercial, I want to share this because oh, she called great. her friend Hank Garrett. And yeah, she right. said, and Hank Eric calls her and says, I just saw the commercial. Oh. Who did you sleep with? Nobody gets as much time. The camera right, was on right. her for most of it. Not on the product, <laughs> on her. I mean. So who was it uh, that it you was slept with? <laughs> <laughs> you see, everybody, even at this stage in life, we could have a good time. No, but really and truly, when you can give, buddy, people like myself of an oh. age. I mean, really, well, you know, we're, we're up there a lift and I, I I don't want to cry but you gave me something that I never had sweetie thank you which was wow I can do that I mean I had never done it before and you gave me the feeling that the confidence because it's not just he teaches the class about what to do when you're on and, and talking about the particular product but you also told us when you go to an audition what do you do? So tell our audience, what do you do at an audition? You show up on time. Show up on time. Park your car safely. Yes. Do whatever you're asked to do with a happy, joyful attitude. Yes. And then get out. Get out. Get out. That's a professional. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, it, but it's true. Uh, it's, and also, you also said to me, you don't get every job. In fact, we know you don't get every job. But when you do get it, thank them. Mm -hmm. Because when I did the Loctite, the first thing I did when it was over, I said, and the director called me over, he said, you know, come here, Pink, okay, uh, I, I'm leaving. Well, wait a minute, before you leave, we want to all thank you because you gave us the energy because it was like a 10-hour day. And I said, no, I want to thank every cameraman, every AD guy, because you made me look good and everything. And, I, and he said, thank you. But it, it was an appreciation mm -hmm. of working together. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes a commercial. And that's people, what makes people anything. People respect professionals. Yes. Mm -hmm. And professionals will always be kind. Your first commercial, do you remember it? Oh, sure, yes. Okay, what was it? Montgomery Ward. Oh, oh, Monkey yes. Ward. <laughs> Love you wouldn't it. remember this, Oh, Chapel. my God. I remember my sorry <laughs> board. Okay. No, I was a salesman, and somebody came in and said, I want a baby blue jogging suit. Oh. And I started going through all the racks. Like, baby blue, jogging suit, baby blue. The catalog desk. Uh, 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 I, I could do it again. Do, do you remember I the year? It. I love it. Do you remember the year? 75-ish. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. What was Enjoy. your favorite? Oh, commercial? please don't. Don't go there. Um, I loved ones that my parents saw. Oh. Uh, my parents lived briefly in South Carolina. Oh, okay. And there was a bank there, South Carolina National. And here in L.A., I auditioned for and booked a commercial 
for South Carolina no Bank. No way. Oh, my Lord. That's and, uh, you know, I was a filling station attendant or something. Right, and, right. and I was promoting the bank to <laughs> somebody in their car. And <clears throat> my parents were just so thrilled oh, yeah. <laughs> to see their son promoting South Carolina Bank. And nobody else in the country saw it. Oh, that is But the funny. ones who, who mattered saw it. That's yeah. right. And That's they'll right. never forget That's it. That's right. That's uh, my son. That's I my Billy. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't have to be a doctor. He <laughs> is an actor. That's I mean, right. But really, mm-hmm. you know, when, when you say to a mother or dad, you know, like, your son, you're, my son's a doctor, or, you know, or whatever, an actor, to me, mm-hmm. is just as good. I will tell Thanks, you that. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your favorite, and no names, but your favorite person that you ever taught to go on to really something huge? I mean, what, I mean, did they have experience before or did they all of a sudden, hey, it clicked? I I can't take credit. I just can't take credit. There's a lady that you know and we see every day on TV and in print ads uh, who's a lovely lady from Hawaii and uh, she's worked consistently. And I would never even try to take credit. Mm -hmm. But I have to be gratified that she comes to class, that she repeats what she thought she learned and Mm -hmm. gets better at it every time. That's the idea, coming back to class to do the same thing again so it sticks. You're refreshed. You're refreshed. And every time Jackie goes on a commercial now, hopefully, she knows, this is what I do. This is what I do. This is Mm -hmm. what I do. And And also, it's psyching yourself out to say, I am that person in the commercial, Mm -hmm. not me. And that's hard for me because I'm so, because I'm a little out there, you know. Pink Pink went on an audition for something she didn't know. And when she got there, she found out it was for Gucci watches. Mm. And we walked in the door, we walked out the door, and they said, You got it. Be here at this yeah, time right. at this place. I just and did she did, it. did you that? <laughs> at the Los, <laughs> Ange- know, was like Los Angeles <laughs> County Museum. Yeah. And she's in front of all the paintings with her European, Gucci watch. European commercial. And it was and fabulous. It, and I mean, go figure. Yeah, she I, has a look. And then <laughs> yeah. the other one. It's a little I, unusual. Oh, no, no. <laughs> then the other one I did, you know, when they tell you, uh, we want you and we want you in brown color or whatever color, you go for it. Well, <laughs> you know, I really know. I like pink. I like powder blue, if you're going to ask me. So I went, because of this uh, India commercial, uh, a, um, for perf- a, a yeah. perfume, a power, power eagle is called, said, we have you in brown and come. So I go and I take a suitcase full of blue powder blue and a couple of pink and all that. So I get there and she said, okay, your clothes are in there, the director. I said, may I also just put on an outfit you might like? Oh, okay. So it's a powder blue suit with a pink boa. <laughs> so I walk out in it, and they all went, "Wow, we love that." That's what I and did. And the commercial is running now. <laughs> Para Eagle perfume. But but if the they tell you to but, wear anything. Yeah, well, that was an issue for her. And yeah. She knows that. When right. she first began, huh. I had to explain delicately yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that this might not always be appropriate right. Right. Uh, and that she needed to just give in. Give in. And you did. I mean, and it's not that big a deal. Right. I know you have two other outfits that, are, that aren't <laughs> pink. <laughs> at least two. I've seen at that least, closet. Yeah. Right. At, 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 least, at least two. I, I have a closet, everybody, in the back of the house. True story. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that has like green and blue and red in case, in case someone wants that. I am ready. Buddy Powell, let me tell you, I am so proud to not only have been and be in your classes, but to have you as a friend for it's a long time. And to me, you are the best Thank that you. there is. Thank you. And I think everybody, why everybody. Don't, why don't we run that video? Oh, let's run the video right now. Here we go. Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Huell Hauser, and this is going to be one of those. I'm not sure how this is going to turn out because this is totally unrehearsed. Buddy, you invited me to come to this class. You are the instructor. Let's set the stage. Exactly where are we physically right now? We are at the Hollywood Senior Multipurpose Center, which is in conjunction with the Hollywood Assistance League of California. We're right off Sunset Boulevard, close to KCET. Right. You sent me an email 
I think a couple of months ago, yeah. you've been yeah. bugging me to come to this class and you came, for a long and you came. time. Yeah. What exactly are we going to be a part of today? Because this is very <laughs> interesting. We are a group of older adults who are pursuing commercial acting. Uh, LA Unified has a program designed for older adults through Hollywood Community Adult School that provides the fundamentals needed to get out there and get work and get money through commercial acting. In commercials? Yeah, TV commercials. Now, we just got here. I haven't met any of these people. We will be talking with a lot of them today. Are most of these people pure amateurs? Have they ever been in? And that is Buddy Powell with Huell Hauser, talking about his class, showing his fabulous students. Buddy, for all your students, hundreds of them, and from me, from the bottom of my heart, I say thank you for your energy. Thank you for all the talent that you provide to help us be better and make a career out of something that we would never, ever have thought. God bless you. Thank, thank you, you for being my friend. Thank Everyone, you, thank so you. God bless. See you next time. You're listening to Pink Lady Presents only on LA Talk Radio.